Let's just start it off smoking crack. I'd stay up for four or five days at a time. Um, then eventually that didn't work for me anymore, so then that's when I started with the heroin. And combining the two was like kissing God. It was like, holy shit, I knew I was in trouble. Before his life spiraled out of control, Jason Peter, all six foot five, 275 pounds of him, played on three national championship teams at the University of Nebraska. Picked up by Jason Peter, touchdown Nebraska. Was a $4 million first round draft pick with the Carolina Panthers, and secretly was an addict. At the time, hooked not on the hard stuff, but on legal drugs that he says led him to crack and heroin. Drugs that are widely used among football players, prescription pain pills. My relationship with the pills was I needed them more than I needed anybody in my life. I was married to those pills. Normally, somebody might take, I'm told, four of these pills a day. Yeah. You were taking how many? I was taking up to 80. Sorry? 80. A day? Of the high potency, the strongest ones. Do you get up in the morning and say, I have to have I have my painkillers? Yeah, I have to. I have to. Otherwise, you start getting the chills. You start sweating. You're going to go into you know, withdrawal. You were a junkie. Yeah. Did you see yourself at the time as, as an addict? No. It was pills. You get them from pharmacies. What ended up as an 80 Vicodin a day habit started out innocently enough at Nebraska when Jason Peter hurt his knee as a freshman and went to the team trainer, who gave him another kind of pain pill. He gave me lower sets. I took two of them, and I was flying. It was a feeling that when it hit me, I was like, I want to feel like this forever. You can't take it back like that, baby. I took it back for six. In college, Jason Peter says he took them every now and then. But it was when he got to the NFL, where players get hurt all the time, that he became addicted. But when I was at the pro level, it turned into an everyday thing. Every day you're taking painkillers? Every day. It doesn't show up, you know, on drug tests. It's part of the NFL. You had no trouble getting these pills? No. Not from the team doctors who were careful with what they would prescribe, but from other sources. I meet doctors here and there at parties. They love having a jersey hanging on their wall or a helmet sitting on their desk, a team ball. And what do you get in exchange for them getting a helmet or a team ball? Endless prescriptions. And it's not just football players. Cody Payne says he got hooked on pain pills when he played basketball at the University of New Mexico. I didn't realize how addictive they were. I you know, didn't realize it was that bad. Payne says he began taking Percocet, which was prescribed by a doctor after he had orthoscopic knee surgery and was told by a coach that he better get well and fast. I remember the day after my surgery, 7.30 in the morning, my knee's about as big around as a softball. I hear a banging on the door. It's the assistant coach. He came in just mad how it was his ass that he was worried about. And, and you know, you know, I mean, I got, fuck you, Cody. Just, I mean, you know, we don't have time for injuries. He said that to you? He said that to me. That we don't have time for injuries. We don't have time for injuries. Did that create some pressure on you I better get better quick, and the quickest way to get better was with these painkillers. Well, wouldn't it have to? I mean, you know, I, I think I'm about my only option there. For the record, the coach in question declined to talk to Real Sports, but did tell a local newspaper at the time that he's never told a guy who was hurt to play. When did it occur to you that you're hooked on these things? After the season was over, and I kept taking them. That, that's when it occurred to me, hey, you know, something, something's wrong here. But you didn't stop. It gets to the point where you take them so long that you get scared to come off of them because you know you're going to be in pain coming off of them. At one point, he says, he was so desperate to get pills that he even talked to his girlfriend about it. She was a pharmacist. And, uh, Wait, hold on. Your girlfriend's a pharmacist? Yes, sir. You didn't try to get her involved in it? Yes, I did. And, uh, you know, she would not do it. What was her reaction? Was, you know, she could not believe that I would ask her to risk her freedom to get me some pain pills. And that was a girlfriend that I loved, and I, and I still love that girl. When that didn't work, Cody Payne risked his own freedom to get the pills. I sold drugs to get more money to take pain pills. What kind of drugs did you sell? I ended up selling a, a little deal of methamphetamine, 
and to get money to buy more painkillers. Buy more pain pills. Did you get caught? I got caught. It ended up being two first degrees and a second degree felony. Payne got 10 years probation, was through with basketball, and left school. And while nobody knows how many Cody Paynes or Jason Peters there are in the world of sports, in the world of pro football, prescription pain medications are just part of the game. What nobody knows for sure is how many players are secret addicts. When you have an addiction, a problem like I had, it's nothing that you want to go public with. Am I the only one who's you, who used pain pills in the NFL? No. You know, and I certainly have seen them in the locker room. You do what you got to do to be on that field. The fact is, in many important ways, painkillers are miracle drugs. And without them, a lot of athletes would have been gone from the game a long time ago. But now, researchers have made a new discovery about painkillers, that if you take too many for too long, they not only stop killing the pain, but actually do the opposite. They create even more pain, and in places that never hurt before. Pain pills cause pain. It was almost hard for me to even say that the first time I saw it and heard it and looked at the data. Dr. Daniel Hedrick is an addiction specialist in California who has treated dozens of professional athletes. Your body's gonna resist it if you start telling it not to feel pain. There's all sorts of systems that are gonna kick in and say, no, you need to feel pain. After a while, you start having a body that's hypersensitive to pain. Give me an example. What, what do they say? They say, I, I, I touch my hair and it hurts? I mean, oh yeah, well, yeah. You, I just made that up. They say, I yeah. touch my hair and it hurts? Everything hurts. Um, their skin, their hair, every single bone, that's a real common complaint. Every bone in me, Doc, hurts. Every little thing, every little thing. Is that true? I'll bang my thumb and I'll think you'd have to amputate my arm. It affected everything I did, getting in a car. I, could, I, mean, I, had to, I mean, I had to get in a car funny. I mean, everything I did was painful. And aside from creating more pain, sometimes there's another problem when it comes to popping too many of these pills. Doctors say they affect the brain in a way that makes you crave the kind of drugs you never even dreamed about taking before. The use of pain pills opens up your craving center to anything. It triggers an attraction to alcohol and other drugs, speed, cocaine, even heroin. Legitimate prescription painkillers can lead to a heroin addiction? Exactly, yeah. The brain doesn't know the difference. Jason Peters says he didn't start on heroin until he left football but was using some drugs, like cocaine and ecstasy, while he was still in the league. The reason, you know, I moved on to other drugs was because the pills didn't work for me anymore. I knew heroin was stronger. When I took those first two pills in college, that was the same way I felt when I started with the heroin and crack. And eventually, that didn't work for me anymore. I couldn't get out of bed. I was like a zombie, my eyes half open. You know, no joy, no sadness, nothing. Peter says he had finally hit rock bottom. I went home to my parents' house. There was a lot of alcohol. I took about 60 or 70 of the Vicodin. At one time? Over the course of about half an hour. And I swallowed about 20 of the Ambien sleeping pills. I wrote a letter. I, at that point, I did not want to live anymore. He was out cold for hours. Even he doesn't know for how long, he says. And when he came to, he finally admitted he needed help. He's been in and out of rehab, and just two months ago, Jason Peter checked himself into another treatment center, this one in Newport Beach, California. Recovery trying to stop. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And there's still times now, when I've been in treatment for six weeks, that I sit outside and I cry saying, I can't stop. I could easily jump this wall and be back out using dope and smoking crack again. That's how fucking tough this thing is. Since he left the Panthers more than two years ago after a string of injuries, Peter says he often wonders what might have been. What would my career been like if I didn't do the drugs? How much harm did that do to my body? 
What if I wasn't doing all that shit? Would my body have healed better? Would I still be playing now? As for Cody Payne, he also went to rehab and says he hasn't touched pills or any drugs in over a year. I've done a lot of things I regret and that I hope I never do again, and I, I don't plan on doing again, but that, those things is the most powerful drug that I've ever, ever taken. It's miserable to have something run your life. And you're not gonna get any better by sitting in your apartment, taking pill after pill, smoking crack, doing heroin. That's not the answer. If you wanna live, if you want a life. I hope you make it. Thank you. I think I will this time, Bernie.